Hello friends. <clears throat> I'm going to start uh, a series of videos on uh, trigonometry. I'll start with Pythagoras theorem, which is the most popular uh, theorem. And uh, this is such an important theorem that it is used widely in various topics of mathematics. So I would like you to understand this thoroughly. I'm not going to prove the Pythagoras theorem. It can be proved though. So what does Pythagoras theorem state? Now Pythagoras theorem is always for a right angle triangle. Okay. So let us let me read the statement of Pythagoras. So what does what did he say? In for any right angle triangle with sides side lengths of A and B and the hypotenuse of C, I'll explain what these means. The square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum or the addition of squares of the lengths of the other two sides. So what does he, what did he mean? He said he named the side which is opposite to the right angle as hypotenuse. Okay, so let me write that. So hypotenuse is the side which is opposite to the right angle. So it is hypo tenuous. Okay, I don't know why he gave this word. This is a funny uh, word for hypotenuse. U.S.C. Okay. So any side or the side which is opposite to the right angle is called the hypotenuse. And he he studied different right angle triangle and he measured hundreds of sides of a right angle triangle. And he said, say, well, th if this is A, the length of this side is A and this side is B. These are the sides which form the right angle. Okay, And he found the hypotenuse to be always greater than A and B. And he also found an interesting relationship between A, B, and C. And that's this theorem. Or this, the theorem, Pythagoras theorem, which is in statement, can be written in this simple, elegant equation, which says... C squared, that means if you square the length of the hypotenuse, that is always equal to the square of this side plus this side. You can add this to in any order. You can write A squared plus B squared or B squared plus A squared. So basically, this Pythagoras theorem says square of the hypotenuse, that is, if you square this, that means C times C is always equal to the square of the two shorter sides. So these are the two shorter sides. As I just said, A and B, A would always be less than C. A is always less than C, and B would always be less than C. So these are the three facts. This is less than, okay? Okay, so A is, A is always less than B. Sorry, A is less than C. B is less than C. And c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Okay, so if you know this simple rule, you can use this in hundreds of places in mathematics. Okay. So I'll take an example here. So what is the example telling me? Okay, so what is the example? So here you have a triangle of 5 and 12. Okay, so what I have done is I have named this side as a and this side as b. And you want to figure out what is C. So C, I'll put a question mark. So you want to find C. Okay. So how do we do it? So this is the solution and also the explanation. So the first step is write the rule. Okay. What's the rule? C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Okay. Then the next step is to substitute what is A and B. So you know your A is 5 and your B is 12. So instead of a squared, you can write 5 squared. And instead of b squared, you can write 12 squared. OK? And 5 squared means 5 times 5, which is 25. And 12 times 12 is 144. The next step is simplify. OK? So what does that mean? OK? So simplify. So let me delete this. Yeah. OK. So simplifying, uh, 25 plus 144 is 169. The next step is very important. 
I'll move the C squared slightly. Okay, this is C squared sitting there. Okay, so the next step is from C squared, I want to get to C. I want, I don't want C squared here, I want C here. So the you have to take the square root of both sides. Why? Why do I need the square root? I want to get rid of the square. And square root is the opposite of square. Okay. And I'll show that on a calculator. Suppose this is my calculator. Now this this is the square key and this is the square root. So what do I mean square and square root are opposite of each other? So if you go 10 squared, that is 10 times 10 would give you 100. And if you do the opposite of that, okay, you can see they are opposite of each other. Okay, so you go shift square root of 100 is equal to 10. Okay, or you can also understand shift square root of say 10 squared is equal to 100. Sorry, is equal to 10. So if you do shift square root of any number squared, suppose let me say 25 squared. So here what have we done? We have taken the square root of 25 squared. The answer would be 25 because square and square root are opposite, opposite of each other. So you can see the answer is 25. So this is what I want to sh explain very clearly. Square root of 25 squared is 25. So what's what are we doing here? We are doing the opposite of square and square root. So the square gets cancelled. Okay? So, now, so that's what I've done. So if you take square root of one side to get rid of the square, you have to do the square root of the other side. So that is this next step. And from this step, so square root of C squared gives you C because the square and square root gets, sorry, the square root cancel this, cancels this square. Okay. And uh, square root of 160, you have to do the square root of 169, and you should be knowing that is 13. So let us check that on a calculator. So that is square root of 13. So it's square, just shift square root of 169 is equal to 13. Okay, so let us check whether 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared. So yeah, we did the check, so let us do it again on the calculator. So 5 squared, this is how we can do, plus uh, 12 squared, okay, is 144, 169, and then shift square root of 169 is equal to 30. Okay, hopefully this ha uh, has been helpful. I'll continue in the next video. Thank you very much.